Good morning and welcome to uh, St Giles and St Luke's Women's Breakfast and welcome to you if you're not from either of those churches but you're joining us today. Uh, we are gathered as God's people, sisters in Christ and friends uh, to just worship him, have some brilliant teaching and, and just to have a bit of time out to really be with him. So I'm here today with my breakfast and uh, not as good as the one that Angela would have prepared, um, I'm absolutely sure. But still, it's breakfast nonetheless. So we're going to start today uh, with Debbie, who's going to share just a few thoughts with us. Good morning, lovely ladies. It's a real privilege to be with you all today. And whilst I wish we were together in person, it's a blessing to know that your smiling faces are looking back at me through the screen. I've been reflecting on what to share with you today and I think one of the things that struck me the most during this pandemic is the amount of love that has been shown. Whether that's been love through the acts of kindness we have shown to our neighbours, for the sacrifice that work colleagues have made in reducing their hours so that others keep their jobs, for the appreciation we've shown for frontline workers as they keep the country ticking over and of course for the love that God has shown each one of us as we all face daily struggles during lockdown. And of course, the reason we love is because God first loved us. And as Christians, we are to be the definition of love as we live out our faith. What an amazing opportunity we have then right now to do just that. So I'm going to read from Paul's words in Romans 8, 35 to 39, using the message translation, because I love the phrasing. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even to point a finger? The one who died for us, who was raised to life for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment, sticking up for us. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in scripture. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, embraced us. Amen. I hope these words are an encouragement to you, um, remembering that God loves you, he is for you, and he is carrying you through this current situation. I pray that our time together will sustain you for the days ahead, and I look forward to the day when we can all be back together. Amen, and God bless. So now I'm going to introduce Linda Blakely, who is our speaker for the day. She'll tell you a bit more about herself. Um, Linda's going to be sharing with us from Psalm 23. Hi, uh, it's great to be with you today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Linda. And um, for those of you who do know me, you might notice a bit of a change in my hairstyle. Um, I'm not sure how you are coping without access to a hairdresser, but things for me have really got a bit out of control. And uh, I don't know whether I should be queuing at the beauticians first or at the hairdressers. <laughs> anyway, um, that is just a little bit of fun to illustrate how I have been feeling that things have been a bit out of control. I know that that's just a really silly example. And um, sadly, in this time of lockdown, many of us have had much more serious examples of how things have felt out of control, experiencing deep loss, deep uncertainty. Um, our whole world has changed and is changing around us. 
And things have been very challenging at times and all of us will have experienced things not going the way that we would want them to be. So it's um, in light of this context, it's really um, important in times like this that we can turn to scripture. And I have been so grateful on many days uh, when I haven't known where to turn, that I can turn to God and I can turn to his word that really um, fills me with hope. Uh, it practically gives me a guide on things that I can do and how to pray. And so today we are looking at Psalm 23. Uh, this is a wonderful psalm. There are so many different verses that I could have pulled out on this today. And I would really encourage you during the week to spend a bit more time with this psalm yourself, uh, to read it through, to really meditate on God's word and let it nourish you and feed you in this time. But today, particularly, we will be looking at the verses uh, that say that he makes us lie down and the verse where it says I lack nothing. So before we read our scripture together uh, I just thought it might be good to take a moment to just still our hearts and our minds uh, I'm sure that many of you today have had a real flurry of activity to get to this point Many of us are scrambling around the house to try and find one quiet spot that isn't the toilet or it, it isn't even that sometimes. Um, but let's just uh, still our hearts. God is here. And as we take a few deep breaths together, we just pray that God will make us more attentive to his presence with us. I'm going to say a familiar phrase and as I say this phrase in a few different ways I just really encourage you to take a deep breath, to slow down and receive from God today. If you're more comfortable close your eyes, whatever way you're comfortable just relax and listen to these words that God promises us. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still. Be. And in this stillness and in this precious, quiet place, I'm going to read the words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So we are reflecting on Psalm 23, thinking about what it teaches us about trusting God. And um, we're looking now at verse uh, two, where it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down. How can this teach us about trusting God? Well, a couple of years ago, my sister emailed me to tell me that she had heard a brilliant talk by Pete Gregg and I listened to it. Uh, I always really enjoy listening to Pete Gregg and learn a lot through his teaching. But in this talk, he talked about this phrase, he makes me lie down. And something really stirred in me when he uh, was sort of teaching about these verses. And I thought, I really need to pay attention to this, particularly because he was sharing a story about a time that he went on a retreat. He had taken piles of books to read and had all sorts of plans about how he was going to use that time. But he very clearly heard God say this phrase about he makes me lie down. Now, he describes it that he actually heard it uh, in the way that someone might speak to a dog um, where they say lie down. And that instruction is very firm, but it's for the dog's own good to hear that instruction. And he heard God say this to him, lie down. So he did lie down and he spent most of that retreat asleep and um, it was a surprise for him uh, that this was the way that retreat went but it really nourished his soul and was a very significant time for him. When I listened to this I was in a very busy stage of my life. I was working um, juggling a family, all sorts of changes going on in our life. And I thought, right, OK, I do need to lie down. But of course, I rushed on to the next thing. Now, randomly, I, I don't even now really understand how this happened. But uh, literally, maybe two, possibly three times, I was on a bus or out for a walk and I would press a button on my phone to listen to something and this talk by Pete Gregg <laughs> would appear again. And I'd listen to it again and increasingly I thought, okay, God is really trying to get my attention here. I've got to work out how I can create this space to lie down. And so I uh, approached my boss at work and uh, just asked, is there any chance that I could take a month off um, for, uh, for that time just to take a bit of space? Um, and uh, my boss was very supportive and amazingly, totally unbeknown to um, a friend of mine, um, she sent me some money saying that God had told her to give me some money. She didn't know why. And this money facilitated me taking that month off work to lie down. This month was a very, very significant time in my life where I tried different ways of learning to rest. I certainly did not find it easy 
because it took me on a journey of surrender where I couldn't keep saying that I was obeying God without completely surrendering everything to him. This uh, surrender has taken my life on a very different journey. Um, but I can honestly say that even though there was a very painful cost in that surrender, on the other side of it was a God I could trust, a loving, loving, generous God who is with me. And the peace that I knew when I finally surrendered is like a peace that I have never known before. Now, I realise that it's not possible for everybody to take a month off work and um, it, I'm not suggesting for one moment that that is the only way that you can lie down. But I'd really encourage you to reflect on what does this verse speak to you today? Is God saying to you to lie down? And, and what does lying down look like in your life some of us are getting a lot more time to lie down in um, in lockdown, more time than we might want. And so if that is you, then um, I would really ask God today, how do you want me to use this period of lying down? What are you teaching me? For others of us, we are busier than ever. Um, people are still going out to work, juggling, homeschooling, very, very busy lives where lying down seems like an impossible task. And if that's you, I would just really encourage you to uh, invite God into your space, into that busy space. And even though it might not be possible for you to take a day off or an hour off, what does lying down look like for you? Are there even five minutes in the day that you could sit with a cup of tea and re be refreshed by God to receive from him afresh and know the rest that he can give, whether it's a short space of time or a long space of time, to really have that time of rest and receiving from our loving God? Whatever our situation, it's amazing to think that when we ask God to uh, teach us, he will. The spirit is with us to equip us to learn what this lying down means. So I'm just going to take a pause at this point and um, pray for you wherever you are. Uh, about what this phrase of lying down can teach you about trusting God. So Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that in this psalm, it says that you will refresh our soul. So, Lord, we ask right now, wherever we are, that you will refresh our soul. That you will teach us. How are you asking us to lie down today or in the coming weeks? Are there areas that we need to invite your spirit afresh into? to refresh us, to teach us once again how to rest, how to be still, how to put our phone down or um, choose to uh, fix our eyes on you instead of lots of the distractions that we might turn to when we feel we need to rest. Teach us, Lord. Thank you that you are with us. Teach us what it means to trust in you. Teach us where we need to surrender and teach us how to lie down and rest with you, Lord. 
Amen. So hello, Jill. Hello, Sally. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And it's really yeah. lovely that you're here to do the interview with us. Uh, this yeah, morning. lovely to see you. I know, it's great when you actually see people face, not face to face, but you see people's faces, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Um, so Jill, it would be lovely if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about uh, your experience of being in lockdown and your circumstances at the moment. About a year ago, my husband David was diagnosed with depression and anxiety, and uh, that's been continuing over this last year, and actually it's probably got a bit worse during lockdown, uh, particularly the anxiety. I know everyone's living with anxiety at the moment, but somehow it's accentuated it for him. Uh, uh, he always thinks he's going to catch COVID-19, uh, even though he hasn't been out uh, apart from two or three walks uh, in 13 weeks. So, but yes, it's been quite challenging living with that. That, that is hugely challenging, um, Jill. So that must have been at times extremely difficult um you mentioned some of the challenges what what else has been challenging about that for you at this particularly di difficult and odd time well i think it's um living with negativity really um it's it's quite difficult to make him or to get him to be enthusiastic about anything um and and just uh, anxious about absolutely everything and um yes it's quite difficult to to keep motivated to keep him motivated Mm. and um, to, to look positive about things. Yeah, We've been hearing this morning from um, Linda about kind of trying to, to go, go towards Jesus, go towards God for refreshment, for um, that encouragement, for just being able to kind of be still with him. Um, in the middle of all of that, and, and when it must feel very intense, um, what, what have you found kind of helpful in your faith? Well, I've very much enjoyed the um, morning services. Uh, also home group, we've, we've had home group every week, all through the lockdown, all through the holiday time. Um, and being able to share and pray together has been great. Um, it's not been easy on my own, um, but obviously having other people around. My children have been absolutely marvellous they send me little messages they send videos of the grandchildren i've really missed the grandchildren i think that's been one of the hardest things i know it has for all grandparents but it's really hard to not to be able to see your grandchildren and to give them hugs even though we, we see lots of videos and little clips but uh, that's been hard but yes uh, i think there's been more and more stuff on social media that um I've been able to tap into people putting up verses, um, little poems and um, links to songs that have been helpful. And I found all those um, really helpful to, uh, to kind of get through the day, as well as reading my Bible and praying at you know, particular times. I think it's just having these suddenly getting a, an email or a WhatsApp with, with a, a verse or somebody just saying, I'm praying for you, has been really, really helpful kept me going we're really really grateful really to you to you know for sharing um your experience so i think one of the, the dangers isn't it in a time like this is it we, we kind of shut down a bit and kind of become a bit insular and, and go into ourselves and actually mm -hmm. it is important that we understand there's an awful lot of people who feel very vulnerable at this time and reaching out and sending that email or that bible verse or um saying that prayer means a lot what what can we be praying for you and and maybe other people um, in our community who are experiencing something similar? Uh, patience and, um, and just that ability to, to turn to God when things do get difficult. Um, it's easy to just struggle on and feel sorry for yourself and, you know, a little bit of self-pity. But, um, yeah, just really praying that people will have a sense of God's presence with them and that they're not doing this on their own. I mean, a particular verse that's been helpful for me is a verse in 2 Corinthians that says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And Paul wrote that just after he, he talked about his thorn in the flesh or his handicap, as the message puts it. And um, just knowing that we can lean on God and that he's, he's always there and that his strength is made perfect when we're weak. 
And certainly I've felt very weak at times. I, was, I sometimes just don't know what to do. I uh, don't know how to carry on, but uh, I, I know that God is there and I can always turn to him. Um, I don't always turn to him when I should, but, uh, but I know he's there. And I'm very grateful for, for many people praying for us. Brilliant, thank you. Um incredible really that, that you can find that comfort and um you know we we want to thank you for all that you do actually at st giles not not everyone will know but you're very involved with the uh, young mums and you yeah i miss them too i know i'll never be missing you and they they you know rave about your hospitality and they come and spend time at your house every week normally so you yeah. know looking forward to getting that back but thank you jill thank you for your honesty and thank you for your faithfulness and um, we will hold you both in prayer so thank, thank you. you thank you so much bye Good morning ladies. I'm really sorry not to have been able to provide you with a breakfast this morning. Um, so no food for the body but I have a prayer around food instead. As we enter prayer now we pause to be still, to breathe slowly, to recenter re our scattered senses upon the presence of God. Heavenly Father we thank you for this bountiful world for all that is provided for us, a gift from you to be shared. We pray that your spirit is in our hearts. We have seen the results of when fear is in our hearts, images of empty supermarket shelves. We thank you for those working in supermarkets, that their encounters with shoppers would be good and that they are cared and supported for properly by management. We thank you for the kind acts of people to friends, work colleagues, neighbours, to people they don't directly know in providing food, whether it's flour to make a birthday cake for a child or food to keep a family in crisis going. We thank you for those who step out of the boat and set up or volunteer at food banks. We lift to you the work of organisations like the Trussell Trust, who provide and run food banks, as well as campaigning for social change to end the need for food banks. Let us lift to you today those who are reliant on them, that provision is made for them. We think now and bring to you those in power, the decision makers. Please fill their hearts with love and the actions of the shepherd that their focus is on those they represent who are outside of the safety of the fold, those who are left behind, the voiceless. Let them not forget these people when they make their policies. We lift this to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's look at verse 1 of Psalm 23 that says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. And because he is our shepherd, we lack nothing. This has much to teach us about trusting in God, because very often when we think that we lack something, it's born out of a place of fear, a fear that we are not enough, a fear that we have to strive to earn others approval, a fear that we will not be able to provide what our family needs or our friends need. And often fear, instead of trust, fear takes us down a path where we attack ourselves or attack others. I'm, uh, I'm sure that if we're honest, it's not just me who will uh, say that when I'm fearful, I get more crabby. I get more irritated with others and myself. I was really challenged recently that I was on a retreat that um, was an online retreat about trusting God in a crisis. And the people leading this were uh, explaining that do not fear is the most frequent command in the Bible. In fact, it's mentioned 365 times. <laughs> That's enough for one uh, day a year uh, to remind us not to fear. But many of us do fear and um, this verse really reminds us that um, we need to bring those fears to our God, our shepherd and be reminded that in him we lack nothing. 
Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I really struggle to sleep. Um, it might be my hormones, um, but it can also be that for some reason at night, it's when those fears come alive in me, um, those worries where I replay conversations, I replay things that I should have done or shouldn't have done, and they go over and over in my head. But uh, a while ago, I thought, I've had enough of this, and um, I thought, okay, at night, when those fears start creeping in, I'm going to choose to fix my mind on a particular scripture. Um, and so I chose these verses, actually, I lack nothing. And so lying in bed at night, instead of letting my mind uh, carry on that path of flurry and fear, um, I chose to keep using this phrase, I lack nothing. And I prayed that the more I repeated it in my head, the more that I would believe it to be true and live it to be true. Now, it was not an instant cure. I can't say that I've been cured of insomnia. <laughs> um, but what it has really helped with is helping me to rest at night, that even when I don't sleep, I can be in a restful place, uh, being reminded that I lack nothing. One thing that is really amazing about God, one of the many things, is that he is a promise keeper. We know that we lack nothing because we trust that he will keep his promises. He is not like us. He doesn't let us down. He is abundant. There are no limits to the resources that he has. There are no limits to the love that he has for you. It's never, ever going to run out. And I think the more that we can turn to learn who God is, the more we learn about his abundance, the more we will learn to trust and the more we will be able to say, I lack nothing, because we can say those words in confidence, trusting in his abundance, in his unlimited love. He does keep his promises. And as it says in this psalm, it's him who leads us. It's him who refreshes us. It's him who guides us. So I wonder what areas of your life today are you really struggling to trust God in? One of the other things that they said on this retreat, which I found really helpful, was to um, visualise those areas and imagine what would it look like if I trusted God a bit more? So in my worries about my family, what would it look like to trust God a bit more in those worries? In the uncertainty about the future, what would it look like for me to trust God a bit more? So after uh, this time together, I'd really encourage you maybe to write a few of these things down um, but really bring them to mind and um, pray that you will commit those areas to say, what would it look like if I trusted God a bit more in that area? You fill in your own blank. Um, it might be one particular issue that uh, is immediately coming to mind, or you might need to think a little bit more about it um, and ask God to really highlight those areas in your in your mind of where you can choose to trust God a bit more. The other way of looking at that is when we reflect on God's abundance, going back to what I was saying about his resources being unlimited in those areas, what would it look like if we heard God saying, trust me? Trust me with this fear. Trust me with this thing that keeps you awake at night. Trust me with this relationship that you are worried about.
So I um, I really hope that uh, God will continue to be at work in you. I know that he is with you. I know that you can trust him, that he keeps his promises, that he is abundant, that He his love is unlimited. And I really pray that we will continue to journey together in learning how to trust him a bit more. It might be helpful for you to pick a friend or somebody else that is watching this today and um, to say to them, actually, I really want to be accountable to you in this. Will you pray for me that I can trust God a bit more in this situation, that I can experience his love and unlimited resources in this situation. The other thing just uh, before we finish is that um, I would really encourage you to spend time in Psalm 23. Like me, it might be helpful to particularly pick out one verse to memorise like I did with I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Just have a read through and think about which verse is really speaking to you in your situation that would be helpful to memorise, stick it in your phone, <clears throat> stick it on your mirror, in your car, wherever it is that helps you to be reminded of God's truth. And the other thing is that if you have a few moments during the next week, meditate on this psalm. Just read it slowly, perhaps read it out loud, perhaps read it in a different translation to you normally do. But whatever way, just take your time with this scripture and ask God that as you read it, he will reveal himself to you afresh, that he will teach you more of his abundance, that he will teach you more of what it means to trust him. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. I'm sure that's spoken to lots of people. It's certainly spoken to me. So as Linda suggested, we're going to take some time now to spend in Psalm 23 as we worship. I'm going to read it to us. So let's just take this time to hear those words afresh, particularly handing him our fears. Let's pray. Lord, as we come before you in this time of worship, I pray you speak to us, Lord. Reveal to us those areas in which we are most fearful and struggle to trust you. Show us afresh, Lord, what it means to trust you in these areas. Thank you that in you we lack nothing and you will never let us down. Thank you that you lead, refresh and guide us. Thank you that in your presence we find rest and refreshment. Thank you that you are with us now. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
Yes, Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we love you. Thank you that you are always there for us. Amen. So thank you to Linda uh, for all of the um, work that you've put into sharing with us today. And, and thank you for that really, really fantastic message. Um, thank you to our worship leaders as well who've put so much work in, Josie, uh, Lisa and Hannah so much work that goes into leading worship for us so it's been brilliant to share that with you and uh, now Eve is going to just share a, um, a short prayer with us 
These prayers are inspired by St Francis and based on the words, Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, so much anger, suspicion, enmity all around. Our world is suffering, Lord, and we find it hard to hear the love song you came to bring us long, long ago. Give us ears to hear it anew, and the words to tell others of your everlasting, all-embracing love. Where there is injury, so much harm done by the virus, by some of our response to it, so much blame flying around. There will be much to be forgiven, Lord, and we will all find this so hard. We will need your Holy Spirit to help us do just that and help others do the same. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. Where there is doubt, Lord, where are you when life hurts? And there is so much hurt just now. This has gone on for such a long time and no real end in sight. Keep us steadfast in our faith in you so we may speak words of comfort and love to others. Where there is darkness. Now is the time, Lord, when we need your light. We are facing an unknown enemy all the more deadly because it is unseen. We grasp at straws, it seems, but you see and know and care. Dear Heavenly Father, let there be light. Where there is sadness, so many lives lost with no proper goodbyes, no family or friends to support the way we would normally do it. Be with each family, dear Lord, and with the pastors and priests and the funeral directors as they do all they can to bring your words of comfort to all who mourn. Lord, in the midst of all of this, we see countless examples of loving kindness, generosity, indeed self-sacrifice. Help us to play our part in this great wave of care and solidarity. And above all, thank you, O oh our Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Holy Spirit, pray through us. Holy Spirit, love through us. Amen. So ladies, we've come to the end of our time together today. Uh, thank you so much for making this a priority. Thank you for being with us. I cannot wait until we can do this again in person. How important has direct physical contact become at this time? We miss each other, I know, but this is so precious to have this time together. So what we're going to do now, just by way of closing, is to share the grace together and the words will come up on the screen for you. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.